EV charging prices swing wildly this month, and both for the good and the utterly horrendous. Environmentally, we reveal how you can tell if your electricity is truly renewable. We find the cheapest prices in the UK, setting the trend for all others to follow. And finally start our totally free charging section, yeah? You who can fill up in five minutes, I bet you still have to pay. Many EV drivers don't. If you despair of paying 85 pence and more, then stay with us. We've got the answers. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Well, to support the channel and get access to behind the scenes content and channel meetups, join us as a member today. Details are in the box down below. Now read the small print. Gridserve claimed to have over 1,500 charges in the UK, but many of them are the older DC 50 kilowatt dual base shared power units or fast AC chargers with 11 or 22 kilowatt rating. Now, I always question the old 50 kilowatt charger at Birch Motorway Services on the M62. Who on earth uses these? When both bays are in use, you get 25 kilowatt maximum, meaning you're going to have to pay for your parking because they only allow two hours free. Well, great in principle outside a hotel, but their hotel has 55 rooms. Well, grid servers increase prices to arrive and charge motorists from 79p to at least 85p. While many claim rising costs, we do note others in this report are 30 or 40 pence cheaper. How do they manage it? Or is it a case of make hay while the sun shines? However, if you use their app, they kindly remove that surcharge, still 79 pence at most chargers. Yes, they do have plenty of them. They are fast and reliable, but 85 pence has gone way too far. I already see a bit of a backlash as the hubs are looking decidedly quieter than normal. And this was an Easter weekend. Or is that just me? Well, Osprey, not quite so bad, merely rip-off, uh, is Osprey rising prices to 82 pence. From my regular checkup of the major UK charging hubs and their occupancy rates, they were never that busy before the raise. Now they're looking really empty. We often see this sort of behaviour just before a crash. Hike up the prices to try to maximise maximize profits for the few who do use them before accepting that, whoa, things are just not working. We also see four locations in the Midlands simultaneously all out of service. Ooh, is this the harbinger? No memberships as yet, no overnight cheap rates as yet. Not very much to attract more EVs. Well, I simply must do better. Well, the rock continues with Instavolt and this seems even more dire. They just opened a brand new hub in Winchester, 44 bays, but all at their standard new price of 87 pence per kilowatt hour at the peak times and 54 pence overnight. Well, then on opening day, when nobody came to their party, the price quickly dropped at peak time to just 65p. Well, checking over Easter and today, the number of EVs charging there can be counted on the toes of a three-toed sleuth and using just one leg at that. 22 pence discount at peak times has seemingly done nothing to restore their business plan targets and objectives. Well, this is serious as the new flagship looks to be, well, a total flop. I wonder if the employee that suggested this is the answer to all their problems is busy updating their CV. Ionity is making moves that appear to be promising. First, their baseline price is 74 pence. Just turn up and charge with contactless, but use their free app and the price you pay drops to 71 pence. Yeah, 3p off. No memberships, no fees, just download a free app. But they feature two additional paid for memberships. One 5.49 a month drops all charging sessions down to 53 pence and £10.50 a month drops that to further down to 43 pence. Now, once a week charging session here as a member will save you over £50 per month with an overall price of about 48 pence per kilowatt hour. You've got a choice if one of these is near to you where you want to charge. 
EV on the move. Hmm. Sad to see that their massive illuminated sign on a stick alongside the motorway advertising 65 pence per kilowatt hour has recently changed to 72 pence. But the pricing has me utterly baffled. First, there are two brothers who each own a bit of EV point. One concentrates, it seems, on the forecourts, petrol forecourts, but has EV charges on some of those. The other has rebranded to EV on the move. He's concentrating on EV charging, but some of those locations also have petrol and diesel pumps. Confused? Well, it gets worse. I cannot find an app. But they now install Tesla V4 chargers and they appear on the Tesla maps and the app as open to all priced at 65 pence. Still today. Meanwhile, at the M61 Riverton services, they have, according to Zapmap, CCS2 chargers there at 61 pence and others at the signposted price of 72 pence. <laughs> Well, 62 pence is to be praised, and even a 72 pence mentioned on the good book. EV on the move really needs to sort out their advertising and promotion, or EV drivers will just not find them. Well, it had to happen. Tesla now has the UK's largest rapid and ultra rapid EV charging network, which also happens to be the cheapest, although later entries here in this video will see them being challenged for that title. Total is now over 1,800 bays located in superchargers, and the slowest is a painful 130 kilowatts. It's about where Instavolt reach. While the vast majority are now 250 kilowatt with dedicated power, no sharing between bays. Most of these are now open to other non-Tesla EVs with CCS2 compatibility. Prices are different at individual locations and also at different times of the day. Tesla recently extended the peak hours, that's when the price is the highest, from an average of 4 hours from 4pm to 8pm, right up to now 11 hours from 9am to 8pm. Tesla is trying to encourage or force EV drivers to spread the load evenly throughout the day, rather than having queues in peak times. And if the encouragement does not work, they, they will follow up. They impose massive price rises to prevent those queues. And finally, if even that doesn't work, they simply stop non-Tesla EVs from using them. Now, I fully agree with this policy. Nobody likes to arrive and find massive queues when most of the EVs do not actually need to charge at all at that exact moment in time. That would be like going to the beach on a bank holiday Monday and then moaning, I can't find a parking space. Well, of course you can't. Prices for non-Tesla EVs range from about 65 pence peak to around 30 pence off peak. But at odd ones like Chessant, uh, that price is now 90 pence peak and 80p off peak. Boy, are they trying to keep non-Teslas away. They obviously have a capacity issue here and the next likely move is to just revert it to Tesla only. They've done that recently. Well, before everyone gets on the high horses, a Gatwick, for example, which is underutilised, their peak rate is 56, off-peak is 35, while at the Trafford Centre, a very busy open-to-all charger, peak is the same 56p, while off-peak crashes down to 28p. No membership needed. Well, Gridserve, Osprey and Instavolt all have increased their prices and new entry has arrived at a true cut price. With over 40 locations across the UK, each equipped with 150 kilowatt chem power chargers, Arnold Clark Charge has joined the field, or should we say undercut the field. They are priced at 55 pence per kilowatt hour, and that's a bargain. Now, there is controversy over are they public chargers because, by definition, they must have a contactless payment method. These do and also be able to be operated from the charger without needing an app. And these, well, they sort of can't. They are open to the public, but you do need their app, and this gives you the ability to book a charger en route so it's reserved for you when you get there. No queues. Even if the rest of it's heaving, no queues for you. That's neat. They're aiming for 100 locations, they're nearly halfway, and they'll end up with over 500 ultra-rapid chargers at 55 pence. Since they are in Arnold Clark dealerships, which are almost all securely locked and barriered each night at about 5.30, they actually have a nifty ANPR system. Pre-book after hours, and as you drive up, the barriers will open for you. Can also be done as you arrive from outside the barrier if you haven't actually pre-booked. That's double neat.
Well, 55 pence, good size network, pre-booking. This is the way forward. Take note, all you others who are putting up prices. There is more than one way to skin a cat. But the best is kept to the last. They are about to launch their on-demand charging service. Tell them where your EV is and they'll come to you, charge it there and then. Wow, that's triple neat. There is more and the dedicated video will be launched when our local branch opens there. Arnold Clark Charge Up for Business. We're going to test it all. Uh, you need to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Well, the supermarkets are finally slowly getting in on the act. It's a bit piecemeal and haphazard, but they are starting. Sainsbury's now operates their own network, Smart Charge. Yes, they are their own CPO. They buy in Kempower units, which the default seem to be already in their colour scheme. That's the orange and grey. And the price, well, that does vary, like supermarket fuel does. My local store is priced as 72 pence, but two bonuses. First, you get your nectar points, just like petrol and diesel and shopping. Second, on a whim, I tried my Electroverse card and I was surprised to find it worked. On a recent trip, I used this Electroverse and took 13.3 kilowatt hours of charge, paid £8.81. That makes 66 pence net. That's pretty good. Well, what's this space? Because Sainsbury's, as a CPO, can charge whatever price they choose. They could even give it away free as a loss leader. They won't, but they choose their own price and they can and will react to local competition. If they find a lower price attracts new customers to their store where they make the most money, they definitely will. Supermarkets are a cutthroat business. While well, meeting with their CEO, I finally managed to learn why it was named and how to pronounce the name Evive. It seems the company had a different name to start with, just about to launch, and then quickly got a copyright strike and research found that pretty much every single mention of EV name was already taken. So they invented the name that nobody could pronounce on the basis that, well, if you can't pronounce it, nobody would have taken that one. They got that right. Uh, they're also a CPO that is bucking the trend and not raising prices. In fact, during a recent interview, I raised the reality of having locations really close, sometimes 50 or 100 yards, to their competitors. I was surprised just how much they already watch other CPOs and their prices and monitor the usage of their own locations. With supermarkets now in on the act, with the ability to heavily discount if they want to, I got the idea that local price variations might become an issue in the future. Currently priced at 75 pence, they seem to have no plans to hike their prices. They have at this point chosen to concentrate on a niche market with their link up with Green King pub chain. Their captain market is in there for a while. So top up is really quite handy. Their tritium units are fine. They're 75 kilowatt hours, which is ample for most diners to be able to have a decent meal and get a sensible charge. Now, before we hit the blockbuster sections, including totally free EV charging, uh, in the rest of the field, there's not much happening. Apple Green, MFG, Shell Recharge, BP Pulse, myriad of others, they've all gone very quiet. Now, I feel I must return to memberships that I mentioned with Ionity a bit earlier. Many CPOs offer them, and they are an absolute no-brainer for some people. Think for a second. If your local petrol station said, oh, give us a five and we'll knock off 50 pence a litre for the whole month, the queues at that garage would be a mile long. The detractors you'll see in the comments section below, oh, I don't use apps, I don't use memberships, I won't pay. They're just jealous because they don't get that. An average motorist charges about once a week and puts in no more than 50 kilowatt hours. A membership of even £10 a month, or many or less, that drops the price per kilowatt by 25 or 30% will show a significant saving, sometimes more than £50 a month. I personally would have better things to do with that £50 a month than just to hand it to their CPO and say, I'm not going to use your membership on principle. Well, in similar similar vein, there are Universal Charge Cards, RFID, best known being Electroverse, run by Octopus Electric a very popular home utility. 
The card allows you to operate several CPO chargers like Instavolt Osprey using the RFD card, so no contactless needed and therefore no pre-authorization fee. Your payment details are stored on the card, but it goes one better in that the charging session can just be added to your home electricity bill. If you link your card to your Octopus Home account, that also gives you additional discounts. On a series of recent charging sessions at Instavolt, normally 87, I paid 78. At Osprey, normally 82, I paid 73. And at Ionity, normally 74, I paid 65. This is a free issue card. Don't pay the new hyper prices. At least get some sort of discount. Well, Star of the Week and a feature in a future video has to be AW Energy. Paul Egan, a regular viewer and Patreon member, sent us these interesting videos. AW Energy and 39 pence instantly caught my eye. These are Kempower units, 150 kilowatts. Now, there is a full story here. You'll be coming in a future video. But in brief, it is a new venture for a historic family run business heavily involved in the working to help the environment. Here they already owned four wind turbines and decided to install some EV chargers. Instead of connecting them to the grid, they are hardwired into one of the turbines. So first, you're guaranteed to get clean green electricity. Blades are turning in the background while you charge, you can see it. Second, not being connected to the grid, they pay them nothing, nil, zero. The turbines provide the power for the charger and all four turbines supply power to the grid and charge them for it. Yeah, you really do need to see this full video as I discussed this very subject with a number of CEOs recently and all seem to believe that the day when they actually forget the grid and start building standalone EV chargers with their own wind, PV and battery, but absolutely no grid connection, they're coming. They would then control every aspect and this 39 pence shows what can be done. Obviously, they need to return on the wind turbines and all the PV panels, and they need a return on the charger and the installation. But they control the price. Now, in theory, they could drop this down to almost zero because they're making money out of the turbines. So watch out, Tesla. You're already losing your cheap charging reputation. So finally, we're looking at totally free charging. Yeah, it exists, and it's actually growing in popularity. I've just been approached by the latest. This is the Holiday Inn Express Hotel. I've long asked why there are not more destination chargers at hotels, and now I have my answer. I'm going to be doing a feature video on this in the very near future, but essentially they've installed 24 fast chargers, these are normally 7 kilowatts, and a large 300 kilowatt PV array, and that's plenty enough to power them. Guests staying at the hotel are offered a package of a room, a meal, a complimentary drink, and free charging during their stay. This is a really great entry into the EV charging world and is aimed at exactly the right market, in my opinion. See, ultra rapid chargers, absolutely brilliant for a road trip, but the road trip always involves arriving somewhere at your destination, even if that is just an overnight stop. Now, if all destinations in time, car parks, national trust, hotels, retail parks and the like, all had ample, really affordable, or in this case, totally free, fast charging, it just opens up a new charging experience. Watch out for that full video and subscribe so you don't miss it. Well, that's it for now. A lot happening and on balance, definitely on the positive side. The days of the big names ripping us off at 79 pence and above coming to an end. Discount locations are the in thing, and maybe one day every single wind turbine or PV farm in the whole of the UK could be complemented by EV chargers being plugged directly into them. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.